So by the time I was in the seventh grade, I could I was reading like Martian Chronicles, the fall rise and fall of a third Reich. I was reading good healthy books, but I would get bored in class in math because it was too easy. And they wanted to put me back in a level 101 class, you know, low level class with. <laughs> what do you class. mean? They thought you were stupid because you were bored? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm so relating to this. Only I could hear the subtleties of what you said. Actually, listen to you. Focus on your masters in physics, and then get into this conversation. I was identical to you. I would fall asleep in school. I was so bored. I would pull my hair out of my arm. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was ripping hairs out of my forearm. I was so bored. I can, I can relate to this. Trust me. Do you know what saves me? This Polish teacher, whose parents were from World War II, you know, from uh, Poland, escaped here. She took me aside and said, do you know what they're going to do to you? She scolded me for not performing in the other classes. And then she uh, went to the school board, or, you know, in middle school, and said, he must be in advanced classes. She moved me in advanced classes, and I just screamed forward in math and the sciences and stuff. I just was. Unbelievable. <laughs> that, that, that's such a beautiful story. Now, that you're living the American dream. You are the American dream. You're the opposite of what Obama says uh, can be achieved in this country. How do you feel? I, I hate to, it's a leading question, and I have to ask it. You're for Trump. You're a highly educated man. How do you feel about Barack Obama? No priming necessary. I despise him. I despised him when I first heard an interview on him where he thought the Constitution, uh, uh, he wanted to get around the Constitution because it was too limiting for the government. <laughs> I heard that man speak. I those words i knew he was not fit for america he would james what what kind of person is he in your vernacular of the people you grew up with what would you define him as as a type i would consider him a racist it's kind of hard to say that if you look at the cabinet he's bringing people in but he's a racist he has a chip on his shoulder that people don't understand he has an ability to speak and in, in, in terms that make people think, oh, you know, he's mesmerizing. But he's a liar. He can turn on a dime in a heartbeat. He will say one thing and people believe it, but underneath he's doing something. He's demonic. Look at his eyes. Look at the way he talks. <laughs> he thinks he's above everyone else, and he's not. He puts his pants off. <laughs> I just James, I James, you're a brother from another mother, man. You and I think the same way. It just shows you that the truth is truth, and it transcends all uh, age, time, and space. I'll tell you that. I don't know what to say to you other than you're a blessing to the show. Guys, you got to get James's phone number and make James a kind of regular call into the show. James, all I can do is say I love having you as a caller. You raise the IQ level of the show. I'm sending you government zero. And as soon as Diseases Without Borders is available, I, I don't even, I can't send it. It's an ebook. Thank you so much for being with us, James. I never would have expected such a great caller out of nowhere. When I come back, we're going to talk about the, uh, uh, the Caucasian caucus tonight. And we're going to talk about the Donald Trump interview, which just occurred in the Savage Nation. Everything about Iowa, including Battleship Iowa, right here on the Savage Nation. Robert heard that a Polish teacher saved that caller and turned him into the physicist that he is today. Let's hear it for the Polish people, Robert. So Iowa. Iowa's in everyone's mind. So what comes to my mind is a man who's been in boating his whole life is the USS Iowa battleship from 1943. And it's important to mention this because the Iowa-class battleships were amongst the biggest in the world. They certainly were amongst the best. And the reason I want to mention it is, is a couple of reasons. They were so far ahead of their time. The Iowa-class battleship from World War II, you say, ah, who can? this thing was 50 years ahead of its time. Think of what the men who created this ship must have been mentally to have created a ship like this, the uh, <clears throat> Iowa, followed by USS New Jersey, USS Missouri, USS Wisconsin, right? And the thing was designed to deter the Imperial Japanese Navy. Okay, so what did they build? Think about this. It was laid down on July 1939 at the outset of World War II, laid down June 1940, ordered on July 1939, laid down 1940 by the New York Naval Yard, which I'll tell you about in a minute, 
that really was the Brooklyn Navy, Naval Yard underneath the Williamsburg Bridge, which I saw as a little boy. I, I was just talking about that with Joseph Farah of World Net Daily yesterday, an interview I did. She was launched in 1942, and she was launched under the motto, listen to this, our liberties we prize, our rights we will maintain. Now, she goes out onto open seas. She es escorts ships in the Atlantic. She transport, transports the U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt to North Africa for a conference, etc. She has 16-inch guns that to this day have never been superseded except by weapons beyond guns. She had a crew of 1,929 men in 1943. Men, I'm sorry, it was all men. I, I should have said men or women, but there were no women aboard uh, the Navy in World War II. Sorry to the, 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 the disrupt your uh, thinking. They were able to win World War II, I'm sorry, with just men aboard. Nevertheless, here's a ship built in 1940, let's say, and it could do 33 knots. That's 38 miles an hour. Do you know how fast that is even for a powerboat? a pleasure boat, it could go 38 miles an hour, four shaft-generated, shaft-geared turbines delivering 212,000 horsepower. How is that even possible that the men of the time could develop a ship like this? How is that possible with engines of that type in those days? How did they do that? Well, I'll let you study it on your own, and you'll see how far advanced America was at the time in World War II, and it was all based upon... Technology, technology, technology. I've read the history of warfare for many years of my life. I've seen it said that uh, wars rise and fall on the basis of technology. I disagree. It's on the basis of willpower and leadership. And I wake up and I read that our defense secretary says they will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. I rest my case. I'm Michael Savage. Back in a minute. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. Donald My becomes president. I could get a job at one of his hotels, the uh, lounge singer. If any of you think that's all I'm fit for, that wouldn't be bad. I, I wouldn't care if I did that. I could be a comedian for all I care. Doesn't doesn't insult me. Oh, you're just an entertainer. Fine, I'm glad you're entertained. If you can't entertain people in radio, you shouldn't be in the business. You know, you should be a politician or a preacher. This business was built upon entertainment. Never forget that. Radio began as an entertainment medium. It w How did it suddenly become an arm of government, which is what it is? If all you hear is politics day and night, you may as well be working for the government. Of course politics are the mainstay of my show, especially on a day like today. But day in and day out for 21 years? No. But listen to this now. I talk, I'm talking about World War II. I'm talking about a Navy that defeated the Japanese Navy, et cetera, with the battleship Iowa. And then I'm talking about a crazy president, a madman who's out to destroy the military. And we have the stooge, in a long line of stooges, by the way, uh, Department of Defense. This one is about the worst, Ash Carter. He gets up and announces a series of family-friendly initiatives, including troops being allowed to breastfeed on duty. Now, I wouldn't mind if you're breastfeeding while you're working in an office somewhere and in the Department of Defense somewhere. What do you mean troops breastfeeding? How is that even possible? How could you breastfeed as a troop? What are you, tro the word troop doesn't mean breastfeed. They, don't, they aren't the same. They don't work together. If you're a troop, you don't breastfeed. A troop means you're fighting, doesn't it? What does it mean, troop? What does the word troop mean? It has no meaning anymore. Boy, now you've got to listen to Mr. Pink Tie himself. Listen carefully. We know that a high level of work... Uh, excuse me, a family conflict Schmendrick. at work and family conflict is one of the primary reasons they report leaving service. Listen to this phony To build voice. the force of the future, tackling these get problems like is imperative. Especially when the generation coming of age today places a higher priority on work-life balance. We can what? also make relatively inexpensive improvements so that our workplaces are more accommodating to women when they return from maternity leave. Workplace? With a focus on making it easier for them to continue breastfeeding if they choose. 
Madman. To make the transition between maternity leave and returning to work for military mothers smoother, to enhance our mission effectiveness, and to comply with standards that apply to nearly every organization outside the military. I never heard anything like this. I am requiring that a mother's room be made available at every facility with more than 50 women. That's impossible. Which means the establishment of some 3,600 rooms across the country. I suggest Ash Carter be put in a mother's room for the rest of his natural life. And any general or admiral who went along with this should be put in a mother's room for the rest of their natural life. I never heard anything like this. So what, they're going to build a mother's room now on battleships? They're going to put a mother's room on, a, on every ship in the Navy? And what, in the middle of a battle, they're going to take time out to, to nurse? I never heard anything like this. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There are women listening to this show who have served and are serving in the military who know this is total insanity. This is the epitome of insanity. It's reached now a level that is no longer laughable. He has crippled us. Obama has set out to transform America. That's why I said to you at the, the outset of this show, I'm getting so excited right now from that second cup of coffee, that Obama the madman who has a demonic desire to destroy everything decent in this country and render us not only helpless but impotent, has put in so many poison pills into every aspect of our life. I try to warn you. I tried to warn you in Government Zero. Many of you heard the, the clarion call. I talked about zero military, zero police, zero liberty. I talked about zero military, the purges that were conducted and are being conducted. And many of you listened, but many of you, most of you didn't. And so, my friends, that's why I support Donald Trump in plain English. It's not that the other men are bad. They're all good men, all of them. Any one of them would be a better president than Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton. Forget Bernie Sanders. He's a, he's a joke. He was put into the campaign for one reason only. I'll say it again. I was the first to say it. I won't be the last. Bernie Sanders wouldn't have gotten to, to, to step one was it not for the Hillary campaign that created him. He was created by the Hillary campaign to make her look more centrist. But, okay, you didn't read that in the New York Times, so it's not true. I get it. Milton Friedman, excuse me, the, the other genius, Thomas Friedman didn't write it, so it's not true. Well, I just told it to you. Now it's true. Who cares what that old fool says? I don't dine in the best clubs in New York. I live alone. I'm a hermit. I see things more clearly than those who dine in the clubs with each other and don't know what they're talking about, those idiots. Okay? Listen to what I just said to you and say it to yourself over and over again until you understand it. Obama has put so many poison pills into this body politic. I don't know if this country could ever survive. He is a criminal. A criminal, pure and simple. He has a vendetta, an animus towards this country like I've never seen in my life. And that's what this election is about, darn it. Why do you think Trump is so popular? He is the anti-Obama. Do you get it? He is the most anti-Obama of all the candidates. He's got the, I can't use the word, it's a family show. He's got the you-know-what to stand up to what this monster criminal has done and is doing to this country. And get rid of the garbage that he put into every aspect of our government. Throw them out using executive orders. Fire them all. Criminalize them if he has to throw them out. These poisonous politicians that he's put into every cabinet position, every aspect of our government to bring us down and weaken us like Samson in the arena, blinded, first blinded by Obama's friends in the media, blinded by all of the media fools, and then shackled, and then poked by the midgets with hot irons. Poked by the midgets with hot irons. And there's only one man that I see who can stand up to them and get rid of the midgets and get rid of those who are blinding us in the media. That's why I backed Donald Trump. That's why I had him on the show. And I think he knows it. He knows I have a visceral understanding of this nation's greatness and this nation's current state of... Uh, Affairs, And he knows that my motto of 21 years was not created just for fun. Borders, language, culture. He knows that I am an immigrant son. And as an immigrant son, he knows, he knows he can hear it in my voice, that I seek the truth and I try to speak the truth. In that sense, he resonates with me. And so I had him on the show today. As I say, his team called me just before the program. I want to play a snippet of this interview in case you missed it, right now on the Savage Nation. Dr. Trump, how are you? How are you? How are we doing? Dr. Trump, you're the doctor that we need to heal America. 
been amazing, Michael. It's been like an amazing period of time. And I'm in Iowa right now. In fact, I'm going to make a speech in about uh, nine